Hey guys, so, <laughs> looks like I'm back here in the Galut, at least for now, hopefully not too long, and um, you know, I was debating, rather I was trying to, it wasn't even a debate, <laughs> come up with, you know, a topic to speak about today and um, and then it dawned on me after something came across my my feed that it is Yom Azikaron in Israel it is Memorial Day in Israel and without going into a whole diatribe about you know, how Israel commemorates Memorial Day versus how, you know, America commemorates it. Um, it's very s- solemn in Israel. The mood is very solemn. People are remembering the soldiers who died in, you know, various wars for Israel. And um, it used to be that they were remembering the soldiers who died, you know, all the way up until, let's say, the Lebanon War in 2006. And also the skirmishes, you, you want to say, that we had with, with Hamas over the years. But now we are commemorating something very, it's very, very real. I mean, it's in real time. It's very raw, it's very fresh, it's still going on, I mean, it's not over, it's nowhere near over, unfortunately, and um, frankly, you know, it's interesting because our our detractors, Israel's, I want to say detractors, haters, accuse Israel of, uh, you know, genocide and all the rest of it, and we always say, you know, if Israel's committing a genocide, what were to be committing a genocide, this war would have been over on October 9th, or October 8th. Let's say, you know, you have a break, one day break, and then you, and then you just do what you need to do in one day, and you're and you're done. If if we were committing actual genocide, you know, it's one of those things. It's like you wish we were committing an actual genocide. So Israel's been at this for about a little over seven months. I mean, the war itself. I mean, they started the war on October seventh. These these. Uh, these orcs, but uh, Israel finally sent troops in, I want to say beginning of November, right, so so basically, we've been at this for this campaign for six months, the, the, this, I guess, offensive, really offensive campaign, even though it's called, our army is called the Israel Defense Forces, which is kind of strange, it's a strange thing to call an army, really, if you're, you know, if your goal is victory, <laughs> which frankly, folks, brings me to my point. It doesn't seem like, and you can call me crazy, it doesn't seem like um, the goal of the top brass of the Israeli military is victory. Folks, if their goal was victory, again, we would have finished this thing in about a month, maybe two weeks. But, you know, I was talking to a, a friend yesterday in shul, somebody who grew up in Israel, somebody who's a little bit older, you know, in their 60s, they have a lot of friends in the military, and the top brass in the military, and he basically told me, he's like, listen, you gotta, people need to understand this, you know, the military top brass are of a certain political ilk in Israel, um, they do not listen to Bibi Netanyahu, they do not. They do not answer to him. They answer to themselves. They answer to themselves, and they answer to maybe they answer to uh, the guy Netanyahu appointed. His name is Galant, um, and he is a former top brass in the military. And you know they have an ideology in terms of how to run run the military and how to run these campaigns. The ideology is called in Hebrew, concepcia the concept, 
the idea, the ideology, so to speak. It's really, it's really a concept. What is the concept? The concept is status quo. The concept is conflict management. The concept is, okay, you know, we're not here to, you know, uh, capture land. Maybe we are here to defeat, or let's say not defeat, decimate an enemy so that they can't really operate, right? In this case, Hamas. We're not here to, like, capture land. We're not here to rectify what it actually is that caused this in the first place. What caused this in the first place, my friends? Um, well, and you can actually go look at the videos. Guys, if you want to go on my Instagram, just own it Israel, J-U-S-T-O-W-N-I-T Israel. One word, right? And go to my Instagram stories. You'll see a video of, um, you'll see an army commander speaking, right? In 2005. And he's speaking at the, basically the end of the evacuation of Gush Katif, of, of the Jews from, who lived in Gaza, 2005. And he said, you know, the mission is complete, completed, etc., etc., this and that. And then they show all the stuff that happened in Gaza after this, after we evacuated Gaza, right? These people started fighting amongst each other. They had basically a mini civil war. Uh, Hamas came out on top, you know, with elections. And then they started fire, firing rockets at us, as if they weren't firing rockets at us already for two years before that. So, folks, this, what we see today is the culmination of that moment of removing Jews from their homes in Gaza in 2005. And then this force called Hamas basically taking over and firing rockets for at least 18, if not 20 years, at Israeli civilians, deliberately with the intent to, to murder. All right, and we talk about Iron Dome and this... Folks, again, I've gotten into this before. It's, it's completely mental, it's completely psychotic for the Israeli public to accept the fact that somebody's firing rockets at them, for, you know, periodically for 20 years and, and you know... It's like a mafia thing, right? The mafia is like, oh, you know, uh, we're going to let somebody beat you up, but we think you need protection. Here, take this this thing called Iron Dome. Folks, it's not normal. This whole thing is not normal. It's it's such a toxic, almost like, yeah, it's a toxic relationship. It's a toxic situation. And so... All these years, my friends, before October 7th, the, the, the top brass of the military, who were basically, you know, um, people who were subscribed to Concepcia and the people who are, come from the camp that, uh, you know, wants Israel to be a socialist utopia, they now see that Israel's not going to be a socialist utopia, and now they want to wrap it up. If they can't have it their way, they're, they're not going to have it anyway, shape or form. So... Now they're purging all of the people that were in the army, that were this on their head, right? Meanwhile, friends, we have soldiers who are wonderful soldiers who are, you know, attempting to do the job, to finish the job, to finish the mission, eliminate Hamas, but they're being led by people who don't want to win. Now you can say, well, the world doesn't want us to win. Folks, everything's up to us. Everything is up to us, my friends. When Israel bombed the Iraqi nuclear reactor in 1982, we didn't ask anyone. We got we we put, I think it was like eight guys, in fighter jets, and we did it. And people were complaining afterwards. They were you know they were complaining. They were crying. They were they were whining. But then after they stopped complaining, they were like, "Wow, this is one of the most impressive military operations." the world has ever seen. People in West Point, people in the U.S. military brass were like, my God, how did they pull this off? How did Israel pull this off? You know? One of those guys, Ilan Ramon, ended up being, uh, you know, an astronaut who actually sadly passed away in a uh, in the Challenger. So, sh space shuttle. So, my friends, when Israel wants to do something, it does it, and it does it very, very well. So we don't need, technically, we don't need to ask anybody's permission. And so what does that mean? That means that the top military brass don't want to win. 
they want to have conceptia and uh, you know status quo, conflict management, etc., etc. My friends, today is Yom Zikaron, and today the chief of the military, Herzi Halevi, the the top the top um, general, he gets up and he says, you know. He says to the whole country, you know, dear parents, I, I take responsibility for, you know, what happened on October 7th, and I, and I take responsibility for the fact that your, your sons and daughters will, were, you know, were taken, uh, either fell in battle or that day, or were taken hostage, or whatever it is. You know, my friends, when I hear something like that, I think to myself, you know, on a normal work site... In a normal in a normal company, let's say, in a normal work environment, if there's a major screw up, right? If there's a major, 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 major screw up, the person who's responsible for the screw up, screw up, let's just assume it's a screw up, right? And not what I what I'm what I think it is, uh, is automatically removed and in and in its place is put the person who's gonna go and fix it. Not only fix it, but rectify it entirely. Again, not have Conceptia, not have status quo, but actually remove, in this case, the cancer that is plaguing, that is around, right? Not keep the same people, the same person or the same people, to to you know, and then and then to have the same, basically the same policies and the same strategy as what led to the thing in the first place, folks. I mean. Don't, don't, no one's asking these questions. I don't know. There's a couple of people asking them, but it's seemingly like, folks, you know, I just spent two months in Israel and I speak to people, most people, not all, and I come to the conclusion that the Israeli public is so demoralized that they can't even ask basic questions. Again, Frank and I talk about this all the time. You come up to people, soldiers, right, who are on leave from their from their reserve duty, and you ask them, dude, don't you think it's a little bit strange? For example, that it took seven hours for the army to show up that day. A caterpillar farts. A, a, a butterfly flaps its wings. We know about it. Oh, Iran hacked. I, folks, I've had tell, people tell me that Iran hacked the systems, the radar systems, with zero evidence to, that points to any of it. Oh, they knew the plans, they knew this, they knew the outline of this. Folks, even if they knew the plans, even if they knew the outline, these guys worked at these kibbutzim. Again, you try to come in there, automatically alert, alerted. Doesn't matter where it is. Friends, I ask the question, I bring certain things up. The best answer I've gotten was, you know, man, what you're saying, what you're asking me is above my pay grade. This is, these are like soldiers, very intelligent guys, guys who work in startups, guys who are, you know, listen, they're more successful than I am. It's above my pay grade. And I'm thinking, I'm standing there, I'm listening to this guy say, it's above my pay grade. I'm thinking, is it, it's above your pay grade to, to think? Just to ask a basic, basic, basic question? When I tell them that the, the mayor of the town of Ofakim called and got this gallant, at eight o'clock or nine, eight, seven o'clock in the morning, and Galan said we're taking care of it. And then he called him again at eight thirty in the morning, telling him, "Listen, man, my 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 city, my my city is about to be overrun, destroyed. It's a full fledged city down there, folks. Oh, we're taking care of it. Finally, somebody arrives at two o'clock in the afternoon. My friends, um, you know, it's Yom Zikaron." And we're we're commemorating these guys who fell in battle, and and honestly, I don't want to say that they fell in vain. What I'm going to say is that if it's up to the people who are in charge of the military, and if and if Hashem allows, you know, their entire concepcia, so to speak, to to, you know, uh, how should I put this? If, if he allows it to com- to be the thing that is um, actualized in its entirety, you know, all the way to the end, God forbid, then these soldiers will have died in vain. 
I suspect, guys, I suspect, judging by the previous battles that Israel has had, and by the way, I include the 2006 Lebanon War, that, you know, there's what the top brass wants to do, right? And there's what Hashem wants. And from what I've been observing and what I've been watching, and it seems like Hashem wants certain things. How do we know that, guys? Because, you know, Israel has been relying, so to speak, on America for a very long time. On successive administrations. And this whole thing with the Iron Dome has been this mafia arrangement. You know? Oh, we're going to protect you. We think you need some protection. Here you go. Folks, where we allow ourselves to be punched in the face and then we, you know, we pay this guy to protect us, you know, to send us these, you know, pads, right? <laughs> um, you know, folks, I think Hashem wants that relationship to, at least that aspect of the relationship to come to an end. And what He wants now is Israel to, to rely on itself. That's basically it. You know, Biden, a.k.a. Obama 3.0, said we're not going to give them weapons if they're going to go into Rafa, a.k.a. etc., etc. You know, friends, there there was a lady in the Knesset. She's part of Likud. I forget her name. She came out. She made a speech. She said, she said something very simple. She said, you know, I hear that we're not going to get the precision missiles that we want to be able to hit, you know, the targets without hurting anybody around you know, without collateral damage, right? Because why do we need precision missiles? Because we don't want to hurt people, right? She said, okay, if we're not going to get the precision missiles from America, we're going to use our own missiles, which are not as precise, and just blow everything up in the place. Okay. And, And so when we do that, don't come crying to us that we did that. My friends, Hashem, as you could see, ultimately is rearranging the plans not only of our enemies of of people who are who we can safely call internal enemies and you know this Yom Zikaron we should take um, you know we should take solace in the fact that yes these guys will not have died in vain I have friends who are reservists They're, some of them are in Rafa right now um, and, you know, they should be safe. And I'll tell you, when I was in Israel, these guys felt like they were being jerked around. We're going in, we're not going in, we're going in. You know, one friend told me, I'm going to, I'm going to this base in Ashkelon, and then I'm, uh, you know, whatever. We're training, and we're training, and then we're going. And then he calls me up, oh, I'm coming back to, you know, Jerusalem or Tel Aviv for Shabbat. Oh, we're, I'm like, what are you, oh, we're going on Monday. Oh, maybe Monday, maybe Tuesday, we don't know. Oh, we're coming back. We're going. My friends, you know, I just have to say, these guys are heroes just for the fact that they're being jerked around and demoralized like this by by their own command. These guys are heroes just the fact that they're able to fight and they're able to keep focus and they're able to, you know, keep their wits about them and, and, and not be completely, you know, demoralized. And still get the job done. It's amazing. The only thing I will say is that, again, a lot of them are not asking the question, what happened that day? Again, we have we have people uh, talking about, yeah, this guy has to be held responsible, that guy has to be held responsible. Folks, all it is is it's a fall guy situation. You know, and a lot of people are saying, oh, now's not the time to look into these things. After the war is over, we're going to look into them. Folks, again, as long as we have the people running the military, it's the same people that, I'm going to say, allowed this to happen deliberately. For, for what reason, we'll find out. I have my suspicions as to why. Um, and, I, and I think I know who, who was involved primarily. But as long as that, that's the case, folks, 
you know, it's gonna it's gonna continue and continue and continue. This this war is gonna be long, you know, and the longer it goes, the worse it is, by the way, for um, Jews in um, in the diaspora. Now you could say, well, maybe Hashem is doing that too. Hashem wants us to come home. That's another conversation. Um, you know, my friends, we could say, well, it's Israel, right? I don't know, my friends, I don't know if you saw, there was a video today, just today, Jerry Seinfeld was speaking at the commencement ceremony for Duke University. He got up to speak, and half the crowd booed him. My friends, the Jewish people, the Jewish diaspora is not living in the same country anymore, the same countries, They're not, we're not living in the same world. You know, we still have this feeling that it's the same world. Folks, it's not the same world. It's not the same world. People who don't like us now feel free to express that dislike in public. If they if they weren't already before, I mean, they were. And also, we're, we're violent with us. But now it's just more and more and more and more. Uh, some of these people have Jewish last names. Some of these people are just, uh, you know, they could be... You know, our cousin, so to speak. And some of these people just had their brains washed in university. Whoever they are, they're very active, they're very loud. Um, I'm here to tell you it's not a passing thing. It's not something, something that's going to pass them, something we have to just, you know, brave the storm, as it were. Folks, it's only going to get, it's going to continue, and it's not going to get, you know, it, it's only going to escalate. As we're going clo- getting closer and closer to the, especially to the, the election, and I have friends that are saying, you know, oh, you know, if we just elect, you know, who, everything's going to be better. My friends, there's people I spoke to in Israel who told me one after the other that they don't even, they don't think even if the person wins, that he won't even be allowed to take office, whether it's, uh, you know, inaugurated or to physically walk into the White House. Because we know what's going to happen, what these people are going to do, right? The people who are against them. So, my friends, Hashem is turning the gears, and clearly we can see that He's doing it the way that He wants, that He wants it. He sees that, you know, we don't have any leaders, we don't have leadership, whether it's the left wing or the right wing, we don't have anyone that's going to just take the reins. You know, my friend said yesterday, or a couple days ago, you know, we don't have a, we don't have a rabbi. I said, like, you know, why can't uh, the people in Israel just rise up and just, whatever, you know, just, just, just take matters into their own hands. And my friend said, Frank said to me, you know, we don't have um, a rabbi Akiva to our bar kochbas. And my answer to that is, you know, from the Torah, where there are no men or where there are no leaders, be a leader. Step up and be a leader. Folks, like I said, if these people, before October 7th, you know, they believe in something, as stupid as it is, and they were protesting, and they, and they, you know, even if they were paid, some of them were paid, some of them were not paid, they all have jobs, they all have companies, they all have businesses. They took time off to, to, to make their voices heard. We believe in something. People like us believe in something. And there's more of us. We comprise at least 75 or 80% of the country. Maybe more. And we can't take a day to come out on the streets, whether it's in Israel or America or wherever else, and just make our voices heard and say, listen, we want to get to the bottom of this. We want you to finish the job. We want you to win. We want to win. We don't want this concepcia anymore. We pay taxes so that you can exist, you know, you, you, you guys, you know, your salaries. And this is what we want. You don't exist without us. And your army doesn't exist without our kids and our, and our friends and our, and, our, and our brothers and sisters and our siblings. My friends, we have to step up and start asking questions, uh, you know, this is not above our pay grade, okay? 
it, it's not. We need to stop outsourcing everything to people who don't have our best interest at heart. Who only have their conceptia and their and their you know status quo and they're kicking the can down the road and uh, ill intentions. Anyway, guys, uh, tonight we're going to have an interesting episode with me and Frank. Um, Yeah, stay tuned. Peace.